I'm going to go through a driving test report sheet now in detail. This is a report sheet from someone who emailed me in about their experiences of doing and failing the driving test. He got good feedback from the tester and he has a very good idea of where he went wrong. So I'm going to share that information with you so that hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that he did. If you enjoy this video and you enjoy the content, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can also hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and that way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new driving lesson video. So let's have a look at the driving test report sheet now. So it's not too bad overall. There's 13 grade 2s there and no grade 3s. So he just has to brush up on a few things and hopefully next time he'll get it. The mistakes are reasonably evenly spread out but there's quite a few there on observation as you can see. For example, just here observation turning left. That's probably to do with not moving the head enough. And then observation moving off is because he was not getting the blind spot. He was relying on the mirrors moving off. So that's a big mistake. Um, vehicle controls down there as well and gears. Uh, he was spending too long in first gear. And then traffic signs here. Um, he didn't completely stop at the stop sign. So I'm going to go through all these in more detail um, now. But let's start at the top there, okay? Rules and checks. So this is to do with the theory and the road signs. Now, he definitely got more than three questions or road signs wrong. He did say he wasn't sure about a few and he definitely remembered this sign here. Um, this sign here means uh, pedestrian street or pedestrianized zone and he got a bit flustered when he saw that. Uh, sometimes you'll see it like this and sometimes you'll see it maybe with the information plate. Just be prepared for both methods of display. It means that it's a pedestrianized zone and they do like asking this uh, regularly enough. So make sure you revise your rules of the road and you look over your road signs as best you can. I have lots of videos on this, so I'll leave links in the description. Moving down there, technical checks then. He didn't say what this was, but it was it's probably something to do with not knowing how the inside controls of the car work, like the wipers or the lights, or it could have been an under the bonnet check that he missed or got wrong, such as not knowing the oil or the dipstick or something like that. He wasn't specific, but it was only a grade one mark, so it's not like a big deal or anything like that. This person also lost a few marks on hand signals. Now this is avoidable by going over the hand signals in your rules of the road book, or by looking at my videos online, or by asking your instructor about them. So he'll ask you to let down the window first anyway, and as you're doing that, just check the right side mirror so you can get an idea of any traffic that might be there um, as you're about to do your hand signals. So I'm going to show you all six of them now. So to the traffic from behind, that you're turning right. So you stick the hand out the window, but make sure you check your mirror first. So mirror first, stick the hand out like that. Traffic from behind that you want to slow down or stop. So mirror and up and down like that. Okay, just like you would if you were a cyclist. And to traffic from behind that you want to turn left. So I check the mirror and go like that. Just kind of anti-clockwise circles, okay? So they're, they're from traffic from behind. Now to a guard or a pointsman, someone standing in front of you, that you want to go right. So again, you check your mirror. Now I can see that there's a bin lorry there behind me, but he's stopping at the moment. So mirrors and right. That's to a guard or a pointsman, you're turning right. Guard or a pointsman, you want to go straight. is like that. And guard or a pointsman, you want to go left. Bring your hand across like that. And there are the six hand signals. So make sure you know them because it's a pity to lose marks on an area like that because, uh, you know, they are easy enough to prepare for. He lost a mark on position on the straight. In fact, he lost two marks on position on the straight. And he knows what happened here. The tester said to him that he was taking a right turn or some kind of a turn similar to this, whereby he was going from a two-way street here and he was joining a dual carriageway, let's say, or of some type, an urban dual carriageway where there's two lanes. Now, as he turned, he made the mistake of starting in the right-hand lane and he realized the mistake and he very abruptly changed over to the left-hand lane there then, which was incorrect. He should have known to have started in the left lane because if ever you're joining a one-way street with two lanes going the one way, you must always, always start in the left lane unless the tester says otherwise to you. Okay, so... He realized this too late and then the change over to the left lane was too late and too abrupt and that's why he lost the mark there on position on the straight. He also thinks he lost out on position on the straight 
um, which would have originated once or twice, he thinks, from a right turn like this. So the red car is taking a right turn here. So he thinks that as he was joining the, the main road, let's say, he was starting in a central or slightly right of central position like the red car is on the new road here. And he wasn't starting in a left of center position here. Now, what I always advise people to do here is to help you avoid this mistake um, happening is as you're taking the turn here, and as you've just kind of, the car is just about straightened up just there, so you're pretty much straight on the new road. It's always good to give a little glance or two in the left side mirror just here. And if you see a big gap like that um, between your door handle and the curb, well then you're gonna to have to adjust it in. Because what you should see when you're taking a turn and you're, you've just straightened up, you should see a gap more like this, which is closer, the door handle is a little bit closer to the curb here. And these little left side mirror glances can just help to reassure you that you're left of center and not too central on the new road that you're joining. This person lost a mark on position turning right, a grade one and a grade two. Now the grade one was minor. I didn't get any feedback on that, but it might've been because he was slightly out of position. Maybe he was going to take a right here and he was a bit central, for example, or maybe he kind of cut the corner a little bit coming from this side. But it was minor enough, so it's not really worth losing too much sleep over. The grade two mark, he knows what it was. He was taking a right like this, so he was going from a minor road to a major road. And as he was taking the right, what happened was he took the right like this. And because there was parked cars here, the yellow and the blue car, because there was parked cars, he started his position way too far away like that. There was a lack of spatial awareness. Perhaps a couple of side mirror checks here on the left might have helped him with a spatial awareness and he could have come in a bit more. This person also lost two marks on observation moving off, which usually comes down to the blind spot. And he confirmed as much in his email to me. So he said he was only getting the mirrors and not a proper shoulder check. So he was moving off like this. He was getting three mirrors moving off fine, but he didn't follow up by getting a blind spot over the right shoulder. And it's very important you get a proper blind spot that you don't just look like this, but the shoulder turns around and your neck turns around so you can see the back passenger window, not, not, the, not this window, the back one like this, okay? So I'm gonna just start the car now um, and I'm gonna show you what he explained to me in the email. So I'll see if they're in. So he was telling me that he mainly just checked the mirrors and he admitted he didn't check the blind spots. So he was basically moving off like this. First gear, indicating, checking the mirrors, and then just going like that and then picking up speed along the way. So that was incorrect because he didn't get the blind spot after the mirrors and he was definitely going to lose marks there on observation moving off. Here's the proper way to do it. So you go into first gear, you indicate your intentions to go out, then you check all three mirrors, proper blind spot, and then you go, just checking the mirrors again as you move off. So I'll just park up there for a second and then you would continue on. Like, But the main thing is you have to get a proper blind spot there and if you're in any way delayed moving off, you have to get the blind spot again before you move off and complete your moving off maneuver. Because if something comes, like a car comes or a cyclist comes and you're, you have to stay a bit longer, well you have to refresh the three mirrors and the blind spot then so that your observation is up to date. We can see as well that there's two marks on observation turning left. Now he didn't go into detail on this, he wasn't 100% sure, but more than likely it's to do with coming from a minor road out onto a major road and not observing properly. So, as I always say, if you're the red car here taking a left turn, the observation doesn't start when you get close to or at the line. When you're down here and just before you get the direction to go left or right, that's when the observation starts. And it starts with your mirrors. So make sure you check your middle mirror and your left mirror and then indicate. And try to check the mirrors again then when you get down after you indicate. Be scanning the road ahead. Watch out for any pedestrians that might be crossing here. Watch out for any parked cars that you might see here. If you're blinded by bushes like this, well then prepare to stop and creep out because you can't just barge out onto the road. Even though you're going left, you still have to look both ways. A lot of people when they're going left, they tend to focus only on the right, but you have to look both ways, you see, because it gives you more balance. And if there is a queue of cars waiting here or pedestrians come out of this entrance or something there, you're gonna see it by looking both ways. Um, and then as you're going here, so just, just so you'll be looking both ways and then just, just as your front wheels cross over the white line, you have to give one last look then to the right just to confirm everything is okay. So 
I don't know what exactly the problem was, but it was definitely down to some kind of a lack of observation. It could be the mirrors. It's more likely to do with not observing the junction in general and not moving the head enough at the line. It could have been as well coming from a major road into a minor road, possibly a lack of mirrors, maybe not looking into the road before you turn, maybe miss the cyclist here, maybe miss the pedestrian here or something like that. But um, as I said, I have a video on observation turning left, it goes into great detail. I'll leave that link in the description. So make sure you check that out for a detailed breakdown of how to show proper looks, observation turning left. He also lost a grade two mark on mirrors on the straight. So this is down to a lack of mirror checks as he was driving along the straight road. Now, generally when you're driving along, it is more important to be looking ahead, like what's in front of you, concentrate on what's in front, as opposed to getting too hung up on what's behind you. But it is a good idea every eight or 10 seconds as you're driving along, just to give a quick glance or two at the mirrors. For example, you might get the middle mirror, then just look straight ahead, and then you might get the two side mirrors when you're further up as long as it's straight and as long as you're not taking your eyes off the road too long because if it is quiet enough in front of you and there's not much happening in front of you well then that does give you an opportunity to be a little bit more observant in the mirrors because if there's something if there's a lot of stuff going on behind you like a group of cyclists or something or a car speeding up it is good to be aware then because they might get closer to you maybe half a kilometer further up the road so that's all the tester said there the tester just said that he would have liked to have seen the candidate just glancing the mirrors more on the straight, just to increase their overall awareness of what's going on around them. The driving test candidate also lost a minor mark on signals of roundabouts, just a grade one mark, so no big deal. The tester didn't come down too hard on him, but he knows exactly where it was, and the tester said it to him at the end. When the driving test candidate was going straight, what happened was either here or here, somewhere, I didn't say it, but somewhere before the roundabout anyway, somewhere just in the 20, 30, 40 meters before the roundabout, he indicated right, and then left. I believe that's what he was getting at. And that right indicator then before the roundabout was just a little bit misleading because he's not going right, he's not going here, he's not going here, he's going straight. So if you're going straight on a roundabout, okay, there's no indication required on the approach. You keep left as long as it's safe to do so. And then when you're level with the first exit, then you indicate left. And make sure the indicator stays on until you're well off the roundabout. And uh, that's the way to do it. So unfortunately, it's just a little minor mix up with the indicators there where he indicated right. But in fairness to the tester, he didn't give him a grade two. He didn't come down too hard on it. It was just a minor misjudgment and it didn't cost him dearly in the grand scheme of things. He also lost a few marks on gears, a grade one and two grade twos. So this was another reason why he failed because it was the accumulation of these type of grade twos that built up and caused him to get too many marks. Now he knows what happened here. He says that throughout the test, he was spending too long in first gear and the engine was getting too loud. He remembers one specific occasion when he was taking a right at traffic lights like this. So he was going in like that. Now there was no issue with oncoming cars. The light was green, everything was okay that way. But what the driving test told me in the email and the tester confirmed it to him was that on one and possibly two occasions, he done the right turn completely in first gear. Now that means that the engine is going to get really, really loud. It's going to rev up really, really loud. It's not very economical. It's not what you would call eco driving. And the driving test candidate said that he was just nervous about taking his eyes and hands off the wheel as he was turning. But that's not the way it works, you see. A tester wants to see a good, experienced, confident driver not being afraid to change gear mid-junction because that shows confidence and it shows ability. Um, so what you need to do is, if you're going to take a right turn here and you, and you can do it in one go without, without stopping in the middle, for example, you need to, so you, first of all, the light will go green, okay? So you check your mirrors, move off then. Now, while you're still on the straight part here, okay? So you're still on the straight part, that's the time to get the second gear. You can just quickly put the clutch in, move the gear stick down to second gear, hand back up, and by the time the hand gets up, you should be comfortably turning the wheel then like that especially if it's a bigger, wider junction. But even on the smaller smaller ones, slightly smaller ones, you can change to second gear in the middle of the junction. It's very basic because on it, like if you don't change the second gear, you know, the engine is gonna get very loud and it's not gonna sound good, it's not gonna look good. Um, so if you're at a junction like this, and it's, especially if it's a bigger, wider traffic light junction, for example, just get the second gear on the straight part here. See the straight part here? and then you'll be comfortably in second gear well before it comes to the time around here 
where you turn the wheel, okay? So doing this is better, it's more economical, and it's going to prevent the engine getting too loud as you take your right turn. This person also lost a mark on traffic signs. Now the tester told him at the end this was because he didn't stop fully at a stop sign. He just rolled very, very, very slowly. And because he rolled very, very slowly and didn't speed through the stop sign, that's why it was a grade two and not a grade three. So if you don't stop fully at a stop sign, there are different levels of seriousness attached to this fault. Remember, stop means stop. You have to stop fully. Make sure you feel the car stopping completely. I'm not saying you need to use the handbrake. Um, you just need to make sure you stop fully. There's no law saying that you have to use the handbrake at every stop sign. If you see this sign, this means stop your car completely. It doesn't mean stop if it's busy. It doesn't mean stop if you feel like it. It just means stop. This person also lost the mark on observation on the reverse around the corner. He seemed to be able to do the reverse around the corner with enough skill and competence that he wasn't going wide or hitting the curb or anything like that, but he was just looking in the mirrors too much, okay? That's what he said in the email. So I'm gonna do the reverse around the corner here, and I'm gonna show you what I mean by good observation, okay? So the first thing I do anyway, when I'm, rever when I'm advising people to reverse around the corner, the first thing I do is go into reverse gear, okay? Because that then lets people know that your reversing light is on and you're about to reverse. Now, before I do anything, I would give a full full look around okay and i have my feet ready to go i'll just check again then and then as i go i'm looking behind me most of the time so he was here he was looking in the mirrors like this too much probably looking too much there in that side mirror and that's the that's the mistake it is okay to keep an eye on the mirror but you can't look there all the time okay you have to look behind you over the shoulders the majority of the time you can use the mirror there as a reference point I'm starting to turn now checking the shoulders and the mirrors as i go Keeping a slow, but looking behind most of the time. Giving occasional glances in the mirrors, but by no means am I looking in the mirrors all the time. I'm glancing there. So I'm looking behind me, getting the mirrors as well. Shoulders, mirrors. So it's like I would have said in previous videos, it's all about the five point check. So one, two, three, four, five. And two, three, four, and five. So you have balance. So the most important thing there when you're reversing around the corner is that you look behind you mostly over your shoulders, particularly the left shoulder. But don't forget the right shoulder as well, especially when you're on the bend. Because if you look in your mirrors too much, it's going to cost you dearly on observation. And another extra point when you're moving off, so when the tester asks you to move off here, like just after you finish the reverse around the corner, you're probably going to move off on the road then to go somewhere. Make sure you don't forget your three mirrors and your blind spot before you go because a lot of people forget the observation moving off after they've completed a maneuver because they're probably still thinking about the maneuver or um, they're probably still, it's probably still on their mind. So don't forget your observation moving off after your maneuver, whether it's after the reverse like here or after the turnabout. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and you can also make a voluntary donation by PayPal if you like. Links are in the description and thank you in advance. So I will be back very soon with another driving lesson video. Bye for now. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you can always support me by pay. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and don't forget you can also make a voluntary donation by pay pay pay. This person also lost This person also lost a few minor marks on hand signals. Now there's no excuse really for losing, losing marks. <laughs> stop that, stop. Oh God. What's wrong with you? I don't know. It's a stupid hood. <laughs> Is it recording? Are you recording still? No. Now come on.